rats. To some, they're public enemy number one, detested in the media and pop culture alike. Is there anything more gruesome than a dirty, scrabbling, disease-ridden rat? And they say you're never more than six feet, that's less than two metres away from one of these gruesome creatures, which is a statistic designed to make anyone shudder. Only, that view isn't quite accurate. Rats might not be all bad, and that number? Well, no one really knows where it came from. If you do the maths today, we can make estimates that are a lot more conservative. A census has found that in the UK, only 3% of homes have rats outside, and just 5% of warehouses, factories and shops play host to these rodents. And although they're considered a ubiquitous feature of sewers, only roughly 5% of these underground tunnels are colonised by rats. Estimates of population density in these areas puts the total number of urban rats at around 3.5 million, which means that in cities, and towns at least, you're actually never more than 164 feet or 50 metres from a rat, which is suddenly not that scary. So there may be no substance in the statistics, but how about the accusations of disease and destruction? Well, there's no denying that rats can cause trouble. In rural areas, for instance, their voracious eating has been thought to damage up to 20% of crops worldwide. And if you do want to get rid of them, it can be surprisingly tricky. They're nocturnal, live underground, and have a knack for not being seen. Rats have what's known as a new object reaction, which means they deal with any new objects they encounter, like traps or poison, by simply avoiding them. They've also got a tremendous capacity to reproduce. Female rats can have up to eight babies, or kittens, every two to three weeks, which reach sexual maturity themselves in just three months. That means that with enough food, a single pair of rats can produce a 2,000-strong colony in a single year. But the real cause of our collective musophobia, that's a fear of rats and mice, probably dates back to the 14th century and the role that invasive black rats played in spreading the bubonic plague. The disease was caused by the Yersinia pestis bacteria found on fleas that were carried by black rats. Large numbers of black rats thrived at the time thanks to poor communal hygiene, and the bubonic plague is thought to have claimed up to 100 million lives. And that's not the only disease they carry. Leptospirosis is carried by a number of animals, but is most commonly spread from rats' urine into water. There are around 40 cases of leptospirosis in the UK every year, mostly among river swimmers and canoeists, and in worst cases, it can cause internal bleeding and organ failure. And then there's Q fever, rat mite fever, viral hemorrhagic fever. Yes, there are plenty of unpleasant rat-borne diseases to choose from, which probably explains why the province of Alberta in Canada has gone to great lengths to eradicate rats altogether. They employ eight professional rat catchers to patrol a rat control zone along the province's border, have a dedicated hotline for rat sightings, and an outright ban on owning rats as pets. But the rats themselves aren't really the problem. There are very few cases of rats actively attacking humans, and they can actually be rather friendly. In Victorian times, domesticated rats were much-loved companions for upper-class ladies, which began a trend for so-called fancy rats. These disease-free fancy rats make for intelligent, social and affectionate pets. For instance, rats are known to purr when they're content and can even do something very similar to laughing when they're tickled, letting out ultrasonic chirps just like a giggle. And in other cultures, rats don't get such a bad rap. Hindus believe that Lord Ganesh rides a giant rat, and more than 25,000 black rats are protected at the Karni Mata temple in northern India. Meanwhile, those lucky enough to be born in the year of the rat in the Chinese zodiac are supposedly creative, honest, generous and ambitious. But rats' benefits go far beyond mere pets and symbols. They have the remarkable ability to smell stereoscopically, which means they can detect the relative direction 
direction of a scent within a fraction of a second. This is useful to them for finding food in the wild, but can also be useful to us. That's because individual rats can be trained to use their remarkable smelling skills to save lives. Sniffing out tuberculosis in patient samples, as well as TNT in landmines. Working methodically across a patch of ground, African pouch rats scratch the ground when they positively identify a mine. Since they weigh less than five kilos, they're too light to set it off. And every positive identification leads to a treat for the rats, giving them a reward as well as an incentive to find more. Meanwhile, TB detecting rats can screen thousands of samples every year. And in Dar es Salaam, they've detected nearly eight and a half thousand new cases of TB since 2007. And there's even more. Rats are commonly used to give us important insight into medical and scientific research. In the last hundred years, no less than 30 Nobel Prizes have been awarded based on research with rats. Without these remarkable rodents, we might not have anywhere near the medical understanding that we do today. So perhaps it's time we updated our prejudices with better hygiene and a much better understanding of our furry friends. Perhaps the pros really do outweigh the cons. What do you think of rats? Would you keep one as a pet or are you a true musophobic? Let me know in the comments below. And to find out about rats' role in understanding steroids, click here to check out the video from our sister channel, Earth Lab. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for more videos all about the natural world. See you soon.